Hey everyone, it's Vegas. Welcome back, we know you've been watching all day. We appreciate that. We always love being able to bring you some great content on theCUBE live from AWS reInvent 22. Lisa Martin here with Paul Gillen. Paul, we have had such a great event. We've, I think we've done nearly 70 interviews since we started on theCUBE on Monday I night. I believe we just hit 70, yeah. We just hit you 70. You must feel like you've done half of them. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> but we've been having great conversations. There's so much innovation going on at AWS. Nothing slowed them down during the pandemic. We love also talking about the innovation, the flywheel that is their partner ecosystem. We're going to have a great conversation about that next. And as we've said, going back to day one, the energy of the show is remarkable, and here we are, we're getting late in the afternoon on day two, and there's just as much activity, just as much energy out there as, uh, as uh, the beginning of the first day. I have no doubt day three will be the same. I agree, there's been no slowdown. We've got two guests here, we're going to have a great conversation. Chuck Spavota joins us, Senior Director of Cloud Services, GTM at Red Hat. Great to have you on the program. And Ted Stanton, Global Head of Sales, Red Hat and IBM at AWS. Welcome. Thanks for having us. How's the show going so far for you guys? It's a blur. Is it? Oh my gosh. Don't yes. they all a blur? Well, yes. Yes. I actually liked last year a bit better. It was half the size yeah. and a lot easier to get around, but this is back to normal. So It is back to normal. Yeah. And, and Ted, we're hearing north of 50,000 in-person attendees. I heard a, something, I think it was published, um, I heard the second hand, over like 300,000 online attendees. This is maybe the biggest one we've ever had. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. And frankly, it's my first time here, so uh, I am massively impressed with the overall show, uh, the meeting with partners, the meeting with customers, the uh, announcements that were made, just fantastic. And if you remember back to two years ago, there were a lot of questions about whether in-person conferences would ever return in the volume that we used to see them, and that appears to be the case. I think, we, I think we've answered, I think AMAZ, AWS has answered that for us, which I'm very pleased to see. Talk about some of those announcements, Ted. There's been so much, that, that's always one of the things we know and love about reInvent is there's a slew of announcements. You were saying this morning, Paul, in the keynote, you lost, you stopped counting I, after 15. I lost 15. count after 15. I, I think it was over 30 announcements this morning alone. Where IBM and Red Hat are concerned, what are some of the things that you're excited about in terms of some of the news, the innovation, and where the partnership is going? Well, definitely where the partnership is going, and I think even as we're speaking right now, there's a keynote going on with Ruba, talking about some of the partners. And the way in which we support partners, and the new technologies, and the new abilities for partners to take advantage of these technologies, to frankly delight our customers, is really what most excites me. Chuck, what about you? What's going on with Red Hat? You've been there a long time, sales, everything picking up, customers massively transforming. What are some of the things that you're seeing and that you're excited about? Yeah, I mean, First of all, you know, as customers have you know, years ago discovered it, it's not competitively advantageous to manage their own data centers in most cases, so they would like to you know, give that responsibility to Amazon. Um, we're seeing them move further up the stack, right? So that would be more beyond the operating system, the application platforms like OpenShift, and now we have a managed application platform built on OpenShift called Red Hat OpenShift Service on AWS, or ROSA, and then we're even further going up the stack with that. With uh, We just announced this week that Red Hat OpenShift Data Science is available in the AWS marketplace, runs on Rosa, helps break the land speed record to getting those data models out there that are so important to make, you know, help organizations become more, much more data driven to remain competitive themselves. So talk about Rosa and how it differs from previous iterations of, uh, of OpenShift. I mean, you had, a, you had an online version of OpenShift several years ago. What's different about Rosa? Yeah, so the old OpenShift Online that was several years old, right, for one thing, wasn't a joint partnership between Amazon and Red Hat. So we worked together, right, very closely on this, which is great. Also, the awesome thing about Rosa, you know, think about like OpenShift, uh, for, for, as a matter of fact, Amazon is the number one cloud that OpenShift runs on, right? So a lot of those customers want to take advantage of their committed spins, their EDPs, they want one bill, and so Rosa comes through the one bill comes through the marketplace, right? Which is which is totally awesome. Not only that, we're financially backing OpenShift with a 99.95% financially backed SLA, right? We didn't have that before either, right? When you say financially backed SLA, what do you mean? That means that if we drop below 99.95% of availability, we're going to give you some money back, right? So we're really, you know, for lack of better words, putting our money where our mouth Absolutely. is. Absolutely. 
right? And, and some of the key reasons that we even worked together to build Rosa was frankly, we've had uh, a myriad of customers in virtually every single region, every single industry, been using OpenShift on AWS for years, right? And we listened to them, they wanted a more managed version of it, and we worked very uh, closely together, and what's really great about Rosa too is we built some really fantastic integrations with some of the AWS native services like API Gateway, Amazon RDS, mm -hmm. Private Link, right? To make it very simple and easy for customers to get started. We talked a little bit about the marketplace, but it's also available just on the AWS console, right? So customers can get started in a pay-as-you-go fashion, start to use it, and if they want to move into a more commitment, more of a uh, set schedule of payments, they can move into a marketplace private offer. Chuck, talk about how, about Rosa and how it's unlocking the power of technology like containers, Kubernetes, for customers while dialing down some of the complexity that's there. Yeah, I mean, if you think about, um, you know, kind of what we did, you know, earlier on, right? If you think about like virtualization, how it dialed down the complexity of having to get something, rack, uh, get a blade, rack stack cable and cooled every time you wanted to deploy a new application, right? Um, so what we do is, we, our message is this, we want developers to focus on what matters most. And that's build, deploying, and running applications. Most of our customers are not in the business of building app platforms, are not in the business of building platforms, like banks, I, you know, financials, right, government, et cetera, right? So what we do is we allow those developers that are enabled as developers that know Java and Node and Spring and what have you, just to keep writing what they know and then, you know, I don't want to get too technical here, but get pushed their way and, and OpenShift takes care of the rest. Builds it for them runs it through a pipeline, a CI-CD pipeline, goes through all the testing and quality gates and things like that, deploys it, auto-wires it up you know, to monitoring, which is what you need, and we have all kinds of other you know, higher order services and an ecosystem around that, and oh by the way, also, also plugging into and taking advantage of the services like RDS, right? If you're going to write a, an application, a, a cloud-native application on Amazon, you're probably going to want to run it in Rosa and consuming one of those databases, right? Like RDS or Aurora or what have you. And I, and I would say it's not even just the customers. We have a variety of ecosystem partners, both of our partners leveraging it as well. Um, we have Solonis built their executive management system that they go ahead and turn and sell to their customers, streamlines data and collects data from a variety of different sources. They decided you know, it's better to run that on top of Rosa than manage OpenShift themselves. Um, we've seen IBM restack a lot of their software mm -hmm. you know, to run on top of Rosa, take advantage of that capabilities. Uh, so lots of partners as well as customers are taking advantage of a fully managed stack of that OpenShift, that, that turnkey capabilities that it provides. For, for OpenShift customers who want to move to Rosa, is that going to be a one button migration? Is that going to be, can they run both environments simultaneously and migrate over time? What kind of tools are you giving them? Oh, we, have quite, we have quite a few migration tools, such as Conveyor, right? That's one of our projects, part of our migration application toolkit, right? And, um, you know, with those, there's also partners like Trilio, right, who can help move, you know, applications, back them up. In fact, we're working on a pretty cool uh, joint go-to-market with that right now. Um, but generally speaking, the OpenShift experience that the customers that we have know and love, and those who have never used OpenShift either are coming to it as well, via Rosa, right? Um, the experience is primarily the same. You don't have to really retrain your people, right? If anything, uh, there's a reduction in operational cost. We increase developer productivity because we manage so much of the stack for you. We have SRE, site reliability engineers, that are backing the platform to proactively get ahead of anything that may go wrong, so maybe you don't even notice if something went wrong, and then also reactively fixing it if it comes to that, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, all those kind of things that your customers are having to do on their own, or hire a contractor, a consultant, whatever to do, now we benefit from a managed offering in the cloud, right? In Amazon, right? And your developers still have that great experience too. I like to say, you know, again, break the land speed record to prod. I like that. And, and, and I would actually say uh, migrations from uh, OpenShift or on-premise OpenShift to Rosa maybe only represents about a third of the customers we have. About another third of the customers is frankly existing AWS customers. Maybe they're doing Kubernetes, do it them, you know, do it themselves. We're struggling with some of the management of that. And so it's actually started to lean on top of using Rosa as a better platform to actually build upon their applications. And another third, we have quite a few customers that were frankly new OpenShift customers, new Red Hat customers, and new AWS customers that were looking to build that next cloud native application, 
uh, lots of in the startup space that I've actually chosen to go with Rosa. It's funny you mention that because the largest Rosa consumer is new to OpenShift. Oh, wow. Right? That's pretty, that's pretty powerful, right? It's not just for existing OpenShift customers. Existing OpenShift, if you're running OpenShift uh, you know, on EC2, right, self-managed, there's really no better way to run it than Rosa. You know, I think about what, the, this is the 10th year, 10 year anniversary of reInvent, right. right? Yep. This is also the 10 year anniversary of OpenShift, yeah. right? I think it 1.0 came out about sometime around a week, 10 years ago, right? Um, when I came over to Red Hat in 2015, you know, if you, uh, if you know your Kubernetes history, it was at July 25th, I think, was when Kubernetes GA. July 25th, 2015 is when it GA. You have a good memory. <laughs> well, I remember those days back then, right? Those were fun, right? The, we had a, a large customer roll out on OpenShift 3, which is our OpenShift re based on Kubernetes, and where do you think they ran? Amazon, right? Naturally. So, you know, as we move forward and, and, and OpenShift v4 came out, that reduces the operational complexity and becomes even more powerful through our operator framework and things like that. Now they revolved up to Rosa, right? And again, to help those customers focus on what matters most, and that's the applications, not the containers, not those underlying implementation and technical details, while critically important are not necessarily core to the business to most of our customers. Tremendous amount of innovation in OpenShift in a decade. Pardon me? A tremendous amount of innovation in OpenShift in the oh, last decade. Oh, absolutely, and, and, and tons more to come, like every day, right? I think what you're going to see more of is, you know, as Kubernetes becomes more, more and more of the plumbing, you know, I call them productive abstractions on top of it. As you mentioned earlier, unlocking the power of these technologies while minimizing, even hiding the complexity of them so that you can just move fast yeah, and hiding. safely move fast. I want to be sure we get to, to marketplaces because you have been, uh, you know, Red Hat has, made, has really stepped up its commitment to the AWS marketplace. Uh, why are you doing that now and how are, how are the marketplaces evolving as a channel for you? Well, because our customers want us to be there, right? I mean, we, we, we are a customer-centric, customer-first approach. Our customers want to buy through the marketplace. If you're an Amazon, if you're an Amazon customer, it's really easy for you to go procure software through the marketplace and have, instead of having to call up Red Hat and get on paper and write a second check, right? One stop shop, one bill, right? That is very, very attractive to our customers. Not only that, it opens up other ways to buy. You know, Ted mentioned earlier, you know, pay as you go, buy the drink pricing, using exactly what you need right now, right? You know, AWS pioneered that, right? That provides that el elasticity, you know, one of the core tenets of AWS, AWS Cloud, right? And we weren't able to get that with the traditional self-managed on Red Hat paper subscriptions. Talk a little bit about the go-to-market. You talked about, Ted, the kind of the three tenants of, of customer types, but talk a little bit about the GTM, the joint go-to-market, the joint engineering, so we get an understanding of how customers engage. Multiple options. Uh, yeah, I mean, so if you think about go-to-market, you know, in the way I think of it, is it's the intersection of a few areas, right? So the product and the product experience that we work together has to be so good that the, a customer or user, actually, when you start talk, talking about users now, because it's self-service, has a more than likely chance of getting their application to prod without ever talking to a person, which is historically not what a lot of enterprise software companies are able to do, right? So that's one of the biggest things we do. We want customers to just be successful, turn it on, get going, be productive, right? But at the same time, you want to position the product in such a way that's differentiating that you can't get that experience anywhere else, and then part of that is ensuring that the education and enablement of our customers and our partners is such that they use the platform the right way to get as much value out of it as possible. All backed by you know, a very smart field that ensures that the customer get, is making the right decision. A customer success org, this is attached to my org now, that we can go on site and team with our customers to make sure that they get their first workloads up as quickly as possible, by the way, on our, our, our dime, and then SRE and CE backing that up with support and operational integrity to ensure that the service is always up and available so you can sleep, sleep, sleep well at night, right? right. One of our PMs of, uh, of, of uh, Rosa, he says, um, what does he say? He says, Rosa allows organizations, enables organizations to go from 24 seven operations to 95 innovation, right? And that's powerful. That's how our customers remain more competitive running on Rosa with AWS. When you're in customer conversations, and you have 30 seconds, what are the key differentiators of the solution that you go boom, 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 and they just go, oh, I get it? Well, I mean, my 30 second elevator pitch, I think I've already said, I'll say it again, and that is OpenShift allows you to focus on your applications, build, deploy, and run applications, while unlocking the power of the technologies like containers and Kubernetes, 
and hiding or minimizing those complexities so you can move as fast as possible. Mic drop. Ted, question for you. Sure. Here we are at the, this is the, I believe, the 11th reInvent, 10th anniversary, 11th event. You've been in the industry a long time. What is your biggest takeaway from what's been announced and discussed so far at reInvent 22, where the AWS and, and its partner ecosystem is concerned? If you had 30 seconds, or if you had a bumper sticker to put on your DeLorean, what would you say? I would say we're continuing to innovate on behalf of our customers, but making sure we bring all of our partners and ecosystems along in that innovation. Yeah, I love the customer obsession on both sides there. Great work, guys. Congrats on the 10th anniversary of OpenShift and so much evolution. The customer obsession is really clear from both of you guys. We appreciate your time. You're going to have to come back now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank All you. right, thank you so much for joining us. For our guests and for Paul Gillen, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live enterprise and emerging tech coverage.